Yo, Powerful Nonsenses! Welcome back. We are back for another week of Powerful Nonsense goodness. Yep. Super excited for this episode. And we're actually standing up today. Yes, we decided the sitting down thing wasn't working. We wanted to be energetic, so, so we wanted to be able to bounce around. But I also feel the need to like mo use more of my body, which is uh -huh. a bit weird, but we'll see how it goes. Your whole body? You, I do. I, I, don't don't think, I don't think there's anything down below here. Oh, you should see what my legs are doing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing I'm doing Irish dancing from the waist down. <laughs> just, just do it the occasional bob and it's fine. Nobody would know. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's frantic what you're doing. I know. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, today we're talking about personality tests. Yes, we are. And why they're great, Use useful. useful, amazing. Free. free available. Available. Um, and it's kind of come about because actually... One of your favourite blog posts, based on, you know, how many people look at it. Statistics. Statistics data, and data. Data mining. Is uh, personality tests. Our personality test uh, called Know Thyself, mm -hmm. um, which you can search on the Powerful Nonsense website. You'll come across that. It's got about six personality tests on there, mm -hmm. which we recommend trying out. Six. Yes, it was five originally, okay. and then we added the 16 personalities uh, one, yeah, yeah. Cool. because you found that, and you were like, this is cool, so <laughs> we added it. So it's now six. Mm -hmm. um, I changed the title, but not the link. How weird. Anyway. Anyway, you don't need to know that stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so we thought it'd be a good idea maybe just to do an episode about why it's good to do a personality test, how it could be useful, um, and also maybe some pitfalls to avoid when taking note of what they say about uh -huh. um, Yeah, and actually, an interesting little factoid is apparently about 80% of Fortune 500 companies actually use personality tests. Yeah. Which I think says a hell of a lot as to the value. And it's all about that self-awareness thing that we talk about a lot and mindfulness and being aware of how you're thinking things through. Yeah, I think it's quite important. I think these companies obviously want to delve into people's like psyche as quick as possible so i think these tests which a lot of people have a lot of bad things to say about them saying can you really put people into categories into boxes mm -hmm. but i think the funny thing is is that a lot of the time when you actually sit down and do one of them is that you're like wait a minute they kind of like know a lot about you or they know your traits and i think that mm -hmm. i think that's it i think everybody does fall into these categories in some way not in every aspect of their life but i think they're really eye-opening opportunity to kind of find out a little bit about how people see you mm -hmm. And yeah, I think they're great things to do. Yeah, okay. So, what do you think, what would you say is like the number one reason that you should probably do a personality test? Um, again, it goes back to the whole reason of this episode. It is mm -hmm. about like, definitely about self-awareness. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the time we think we know what traits we're good at or we think we know there's certain skills that come easy to us. But what personality tests actually do is actually they kind of open up these gaps what I found most um, useful with doing a personality test mainly is the idea that there's a lot of things I know that I'm good at, but actually it highlights the things that you don't work on. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where I've found the most value in them is that, yes, they'll tell you what you're good at, but certain ones actually tell you bits of your personality that you're totally missing out on. Yeah. And that actually, if you just amplified it a little bit, you might get huge results in certain uh, areas of your life. Yeah, definitely. And I just, something has just popped into my head, right, mm -hmm. is there's... There's personality tests, right? And then there's personality tests, right? And then there's freaking... And actually, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody that believes in this stuff, but then there's like horoscopes. I was literally going to say the same thing. Right? I don't mean any disrespect to anybody that <laughs> yeah. that, uh, that believes in that sort of stuff because, you know, you read a horoscope and you're like, shit, they know their shit, right? The stars are aligned so, for me. Right, so I'm not, I'm not putting any judgment on that. And, and sometimes, to be honest, sometimes I read my horoscope. Just because I'm like, I'm intrigued. Is love in the air for you tonight? I haven't read my uh, my horoscope for today, but quite possibly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so what what would you say to anybody that kind of looks at personality tests and like, because with because the thing with horoscopes is a lot of people will say like, oh well, they just kind of make very general statements, and then and then it you applies. kind of find how that applies to you, right? Well, What's like the difference between that? And like a personality test. I think the thing with personality tests, which I think is the main key, is that a lot of the time, like obviously many of them are all about like answering questions. So they have mm -hmm. like a list of, I don't know, between 10 and 50 questions that you have to answer. Mm -hmm. And I think the problem is a lot of the time is that when people answer them, they kind of answer 
as if it was the future them or it was someone they hoped to, they hoped that people perceived them that way. So right. I think it's really, really important if you are going to take like a personality test that you actually be honest with yourself. Mm-hmm. I know you might say I'm a really, it says sometimes how organized you are, you like structure in your day. And if really you hope that you had more structure and you ask like, oh yeah, that's really me, but ultimately you're rubbish at structure, then I think the main thing is actually be totally honest with yourself Mm -hmm. ultimately nobody's going to see these tests so you might as well be as truthful as possible and then you're going to get the best results out of it so i think the the thing like you say there about people falling into the kind of horoscopes trap is that's that's what will happen if you kind of bullshit yourself ultimately yeah if you answer unhonestly and you kind of play it and you want to come across as if you're something special because at the end of the day you're only doing these to help yourself initially just to find out about yourself so you might as well be as brutally honest as possible it's like you go to a therapist you don't want to start lying about how happy you are you want to tell him all the shit so i think it's actually important that that number one if you are going to do these tests be honest because otherwise you're going to get something back and you'll be like oh i'm already great at all the things i think i'm great at <laughs> and literally you won't get anything i have out of them. nothing i need to improve you should see the way that wayne's been answering them <laughs> right <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm. I mean, my result came out like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. I was like, yeah, boy. You said you're great. You're amazing. I'm amazing. Don't I, change anything. Yeah, I mean, I could. I just. I, could, I don't need to carry on with this podcast. <laughs> I'm done. I'm. I've got all my shit together. Uh, yeah. But no, I mean, ultimately, you're right. It's it's about not answering. It's kind of that thing of like not saying what you think people want to hear. Exactly. Definitely. Um, that. And just if if a question is. How's your work? What's your work ethic like, for example? And you only work two days a week from nine till three on your on your hustle. Mm-hmm. Uh, then don't put amazing work ethic. <laughs> mm-hmm. The funny thing is, as well, I think obviously, like you said at that beginning point, how a lot of companies use these. So I think a lot of the time they think that people are going to try to game it. But I think as well, because the results are so... Just because you say that you're not uh, super organised, that might mean that you're more creative. And if you say you're really creative, that means you might not be super organised. So I think sometimes as well, although you people will think, well, if, a, if companies are doing this, there must be a way to game them. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the time it's not about gamify, gaming it because I don't think you can cheat them. I think ultimately you say one thing, it means something else. It exposes another part of your personality. So... Mm-hmm. In that sense, it's not about trying to cheat to say the right things. And obviously, if you're, it's a very different uh, way to approach it if you're coming from an entrepreneurial stance as opposed to someone trying to get a job because you're going to be like, yeah, I'm the most caring person on earth. I do all these sort of things. and Because it will ask you those questions yeah. like, do you give time to other, I don't know, to volunteering causes or do you, are you passionate? What are you? It will ask you these questions that will yeah. expose to us, like personality traits, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's about knowing that you can't game it. So the more honest you are, the more feedback you'll get back from it yeah and, and what a lot of the personality tests will do um, and i think this is why it's so important to be honest is that they will break down all of your strengths and then they'll come back with the the which i think is the most important bit oh definitely uh is the bit where they go but this is the bit you're really shit at uh-huh. <laughs> but <laughs> it's really important to make sure that you don't it's good to know this stuff but it's not good to necessarily label it and be like the whole, that's just the way I am. I did a personality test and that's how I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, It shouldn't ever be the, it shouldn't, yeah, it shouldn't be that. This is, I, scientifically speaking, I'm just shit at this. So there's no point me even Uh trying. Like, I think as well, that's a, that's, that's a really good point because I think a lot of the time people then see what they are and they think, okay, well then I'm never going to do anything in that other area. Mm -hmm. And I think, we talk about this a lot. Obviously, we're all very plastic in our brains. Of plasticity, it means that we can change our personality. It yeah. doesn't mean you're stuck in one way or the other. But then a good question to ask is then, obviously, you get these results back. A lot of the, a lot of we've here and a lot of like blog posts and articles that we read is, should you then work on those strengths or then should you try to mm. bring up the weaknesses that they've obviously exposed? Mm-hmm. Uh, hmm. I see, I am, I am frequently torn between this. <laughs> I change my mind on it all the time, which is probably not useful it's probably better just to have an opinion and stick with it yeah um but i mean currently where i'm sat uh in my mind frame is uh don't is just play on play to your strengths yeah i I agree with you i think i'm more in that camp of it because i think 
you spent years kind of developing this personality that obviously yeah. sees in a unique way or has these opinions. Yeah. And to then say, okay, well, I'm going to quit. Like for me or you especially, we kind of see ourselves as creators. We like producing content. To then go and say, oh, actually, it says that we're pretty rubbish at uh, writing spreadsheets or being very analytical or being very aspects of our personality that we actually don't enjoy that doesn't uh-huh. bring us fun. Yeah. But I think the good ones, this is a good point, we've, we're obviously quite big fans of the fascination advantage. Mm-hmm. And I think what's good about that one is that actually it tells you what your strengths are, but then it also says you have a strength, but it's hidden. Yeah. And I think that's what's really important because I think that's what that's a better way to look at it. Don't look at it as, oh, I've got a weakness here, so I should probably get better at being more analytical or being, I don't know, systemizing how I do things. Actually, you've already got a strength there that you're probably like underutilizing. And so for mm-hmm. me, especially in the fascination advantage, it was saying that I just don't promote myself enough. It says you've got mm-hmm. all the skills, but you're kind of, I think my one was like mystique and innovation. And it meant that you kind of have a lot of knowledge, but you tend to hold it really to yourself or you don't uh-huh. like to share it with other people until you've kind of got to know them. Mm-hmm. And he said the problem that way is that actually when you go to meet people, you could offer them so much value or you could actually win business with them but you don't like to open up about what you know yeah. until you've got to know them. And I think yeah. that could be, that's a strength that I have. I have all this ability, but because I didn't be, I weren't aware that to other people, I'm not expressing those skills. Mm-hmm. And then to just have that little tweak and change and say, actually, maybe it is worth me expressing what I know straight away to people. Cause I was worried maybe that I'm too salesy or I'm trying to push what I know, mm-hmm. but actually to flip it around and say, actually, if you know something, you can help somebody, then that's a great way to kind of now position yourself. So mm-hmm. I think, that's and an interesting I think part. that's definitely one thing that after you took the fascination advantage. I mean, how long ago was it you took that one? Probably, probably about a year. Oh, probably longer than that. Probably like a year and a half ago or okay. something like that. Yeah. And you've very much taken that on board. To be fair. Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things that has unlocked a lot of your potential is the fact that you've mm-hmm. been aware of that. Well, even like when we went to the seminar the other day and I got chatting to a couple of people, by yeah. the end of it, I didn't mean to pitch myself, uh-huh. but they were like, oh, can I get your card? Yeah, I'm looking to do some video work. And you just, now I'm like, okay, I deliver my value to straight away to them. This is what I know. Uh-huh. And suddenly it comes back where people want to contact you. So there's mm-hmm. where, for me, a personality test has been super, super yeah. effective. It's brought your business. I. Mm-hmm. That's what we're here to do. Exactly. Um, I think also it's really, really interesting to... Uh, if you've got a team of people uh, like me and you, is just to take the same test and compare the results. Yeah. Um, because there, we've done two of the same tests. Yeah. The 16 personalities test and the fascination advantage test, uh, which are both on our blog post, Know Thyself. Um, and both times we've had many characteristics that we share. Yeah. But then there's always those one or two that differentiate. Like, oh, that's why we get into arguments. <laughs> Which is why we get into conflict. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also you see completely why mm-hmm. we align with mm-hmm. each other. Um uh, the fascination advantage is uh, innovation, inno- innovation yeah. which is the one that we match. Uh mine is mystique, my other one. Prestige? No, prestige. I did this earlier. Yeah. Yours is mystique, mine's prestige. Yeah. Um, and so for me, the mystique is, uh, I want, I am after. You mean the prestige or are you mystique? You've confused me now. Hang Your on. innovation and prestige. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yes, that's right. Innovation and prestige <laughs> and your mystique. Yes. Right. <laughs> Sorry. So yes. Yeah, so, so the breakdown of mine is that I am always after great quality. I don't settle for mediocrity, uh, which I mean. Friends of mine will know that if if I think something is substandard, whether that's music, whether that's a film or whatever, I'll be like, it's rubbish. Or our website not being ready. Or our website not being, yeah, I'm like, it's rubbish. This needs to be sorted or I'm not interested. Yeah. Um, And so it's very black and white for me with that. Mm -hmm. It's either, something's either amazing or it's shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I also don't, because of the innovation bit, I don't rely on other people's opinions to, to, build my own opinion mm-hmm. uh, which i think is where we clash a lot yeah uh because although we we line up on that that element we both we both have that characteristic of we're not necessarily relying on the other people's opinion to say yes that's the right thing to do mm-hmm. so uh, quite often we'll both have an opinion on something and we'll differ and then there'll be that tug of war um but because we're both you're after you so could you explain the mystique bit for 
for the audience for just to see where the mystique we... was kind mm. of the idea that you kind of don't really you're quite secretive uh-huh. so the mystique is kind of you know stuff but not many people know what you know uh-huh. and so and you don't share it and if someone is in your inner circle then literally you're like a knowledge bomb you like uh-huh. give them all kinds of information what right. they could do what they should be doing but unless someone can break into that shell of you uh-huh. they don't know anything and you keep yourself to yourself right which is where we line up, actually, because I'm after high quality and you've often got that knowledge to deliver, mm-hmm. but you've kept it. It's like a secret weapon and then it will be a case of, I think we need to achieve this because I think this will actually make what we're doing better. Mm-hmm. And then you'll come out with, oh, well, yeah, I know how to do that. You do this, 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 yeah, this, yeah, and yeah. this, which is where we work as a team really well, but, but- we clash because we're, we might be after uh, the same thing but we'll have our own separate opinion on how to get there, mm-hmm. which will often be different. And often my kind of approach is, okay, this is what we should do. Let's stick it out there. Doesn't matter if it doesn't look too good. Doesn't matter if it has all right. the information. And then right. you'll be like, wait a minute. It should at least right. be something worth packaged yeah. well before we put it out there. So that's where I think it's really, really valuable, especially if you can get a group of your friends or someone who you work with quite closely to kind of do, to test, take these tests, because then I do think it kind of shows you why you click in the first place, but also exposes how, if you want to have good relationships with each other, and if you want to be able to not use each other for your best advice, like use each other well, it's kind of know how together you're better and what aspects do you bring to me, which heightens what I do and vice versa. And I think that's what's been quite really useful for us, definitely, Mm. is just knowing how we play to each other's strengths, how yeah. how to play to my strength and how together we play to each other's to, strengths. To each other, exactly. Yeah, and how we compensate for each other's weaknesses as well. Definitely. Which is really cool. Anyway, we're about halfway through the episode, so we're just going to take a quick break to thank sponsors and shears. So, we need to thank our sponsor, the University of Northampton. These guys have been great to us and great to you because for them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this, right? Yep. Right? So, uh, the University of Northampton uh, specialise in social enterprise. So, they're all about degrees, obviously, because that's what unis do, but they're also very, very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses, particularly in the social enterprise space, which is all about business doing social good. So, if you're thinking, yeah, I want a degree, but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend, we highly recommend, as alumni, that you check them out. So head over to northampton.ac.uk. All the information is there, and we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show. So we have decided a lot has changed as we've been working on this podcast slash YouTube channel. I mean, for one thing, YouTube, right? So we now want to talk to you guys to find out how we can deliver more value to you, because this is for you, it's not for us. We know this stuff. It's a little bit for us. It's a little bit for us. We enjoy it. (laughs) But the reason we put this content out is for you guys. So we want to know how we can help you guys better. So we put together a two-question survey. Two questions. It should take you two minutes. (laughs) Don't even think two minutes. True. You could probably do it in 30 seconds, right? So we would really appreciate it if you just headed on over there, powerfulnonsense.com forward slash you. We'll put the link in the video if you're watching on YouTube. Um, and we just love you to go over there, just answer those two questions. It's really, really quick, just so that we can provide as much value to you as possible. So head on over there and answer them questions. Back to the show. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello. So, we're talking about personality tests. Yep. We've talked about how they can help you judge your strengths and weaknesses, how they can work to compare team members and how you... Stop you having fights. Each, stop you having fights. <laughs> Which, thank God. Because, I mean, <laughs> me and you, I'd have had a black <laughs> eye by now. <laughs> um, so, obviously, a lot of our audience, a lot of you guys out there, you they're trying to kind of find their passion yeah, uh, and trying to find out what they should go into, maybe for a career or a business or whatever. Um, do you think that personality tests can help with that? And... If so, do you have any specific personality tests that you think could be? Good question, Wayne. (laughs) No. It's like I rehearsed it. It is. (laughs) (laughs) No, I think think personality tests are great because, first of all, you get to know what you enjoy doing, which is Mm -hmm. number one. 
but I think there is actually one test out there that I think literally everybody should do. I did it and it was it was so like exposing of exactly what you love to do. And that was D Martini, Dr. D Martini. Okay. I think he's a doctor. He is now. <laughs> but, <laughs> if you weren't before D Martini, you are welcome. <laughs> so D Martini has this process called the um value determination process. Mm-hmm. And what it is, it's literally, I think it's 13 questions. And they're questions such as like, how do you fill your space? What do you spend your money on? Um, What do you find yourself talking a lot about? And obviously, if anybody knows me, I love like health and fitness. Mm -hmm. I love philosophy. There's certain things that keep cropping up for me. And I think what's great about this test is that actually you'll start to see exactly how you feel your life. Like what is the things you do the most of? And obviously, if you're doing those things, it means they mean something more to you on a kind of deeper level. And Mm -hmm. it means actually... If this is something you do naturally, if you're in a conversation and suddenly you start bringing up this topic, that means that's something you're passionate about. It mm-hmm. also asks you like the type of books you like to read. Like, are they business books? Are they coaching books? Are they acting books? And I think sometimes you'll find actually, even though you read a lot, it might not be actually related to the job, the job you do. Right. But it actually means that you have a really big interest in that area. It's just that you maybe currently haven't found a way to make that into a business. So I think the number one, and I think this test is like, if you're going to do like the fascination advantage, I think the next one you have to do is definitely D. Martini's um, value determination because I think it will really expose exactly what you value most. And mm-hmm. what it will do is actually will, you have to like do it in different points. Like I think it's like up to 15 points and then right. you'll get the thing you value most and then there's two other un- underneath that. And I think... What's really important about that is if you can find a way actually to see how they kind of merge together, mm-hmm. like we're into technology, we're into business, we're into health. And I think there's there's ways that these things all kind of merge together. Right. And so I think that for me is something that's really useful to do. And you'll kind of see, OK, this is what I value the most in life. How can I find a way to actually create a business out of that? OK, two things. Two things. As somebody who is very confident that they found their calling. Yes. Right. Uh, and I, I mean, I've known what I've wanted to do since I was 10 years old and on a subconscious level since I was about four years old. I just didn't realise it. <laughs> uh, so for, I, I mean, I'm 26. So for 22 years of my life, I've known what I wanted to do. Which is very lucky because I think Which most people... very lucky. Most people hate people like you. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did a, a panel at uh, University of Northampton sponsoring the show. Um, and one of my opening things when they were like, tell us about yourself. I was like, I'm one of those really annoying people that's known what they wanted to do since as long as they can remember. Because uh-huh. uh, I'm very much aware that people hate people like me. But there are mm-hmm. people like me out there, right, who have found their calling. They know what it is, Right. They know what it is. Found I know it, yeah. fundamentally what it is. Mm-hmm. It's what gives me energy. It's what gets me excited. I'd be really anxious to do the Martini test because I know, I know, I know what my calling is. But what mm-hmm. if Martini tells me that actually I'm on the wrong path? But I know that I'm on the right path. I think it's not about, again, no test on earth is going to say, this is where you need to head. It's never right. going to tell you, oh, I think that's what a lot of people probably do personality test because they think, actually, if I find out who I am and what I what I like, then suddenly mm-hmm. I have a clear path on my life. And I think that's way too much pressure and no free online <laughs> test is ever going to give you that. And I think you're probably never going to come to that answer anyway throughout your whole life. You're going to be moving around in different areas. Mm-hmm. But I think the good thing about the test is it just shows you the things that you enjoy doing. So it's not going to tell you directly, Wayne, oh, yes, you definitely are going to be an actor. It will just, uh, it, maybe it might even say that you enjoy entertainment, which means it mm-hmm. comes in different aspects. That might uh, be like, you enjoy watching films, you like talking about films, or you like, I don't know, yeah, acting or whatever. So I think, yeah, it's not going to give you a direct focus. It's not going to totally, like you say there, I think it's good for you because you know what you want to do. But mm-hmm. a lot of people will do these things and be like, oh my God, I, I didn't realise I actually do talk about health and fitness all uh-huh. the time. Uh-huh. But my job is in an office doing like admin. Uh-huh. And then for that person, that actually might be like a revelation and be like, right. Oh, I see that actually I really get a, I get a lot of energy through do, talking about these things and uh-huh. learning about these things. And it's like they say like education's easy when you love the kind of area that you're you're delving into and I've got like that in the past few years this year I cannot stop picking up books and it's just open up this huge web of information but I think yeah. that's that's the main thing as well. It's not to be so definitive on you're going to get an answer. It's more to know that these areas are parts of your life that light you up and I think right. a lot of people are probably just unaware of that. So it's not that it's not that Demartini is going to turn around to me and say, Wayne, 
I know you love acting, but really, mm -hmm. really, what you should be doing is going to get a corporate career working for Apple if you can. Yeah. Because you always talk about Apple. It's not going to say that to me. No, it's okay. not going to tell you that you your bank balance says that you value pizza more than <laughs> more than life itself. I mean, if you analysed my bank balance, I think you would it's, come to it, that it's conclusion. It's when you should be working in the takeaway uh, <laughs> KFC or something. Become the sales director for Domino's. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, not like that. But I, I do Because all you'd have to do is look at your bank statement and that would be the yeah. <laughs> Domino's maybe, sales. Maybe, maybe it's like, i tell you the opposite. i say you definitely don't value your health. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to get better. That's why we cut off at the waist. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway, so you also talked about, um, mm -hmm. about uh, combining the fascination advantage with Martini, which I think is incredibly interesting that you said that because one of the things that crops up for me, again, I, I feel like I found my calling, and I actually took the fascination advantage test results that I actually did about a year before I started hunting for my agent. And I actually used that as my branding tool. Interesting. So when I prepped for that interview with my agent, I was like, I know oh, I'm an actor. I'm a mystique. I'm a prestige. No, no, I didn't go in being like, so I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> uh, which I think is so ironic that I'm a trend. That's my archetype in Fascination Advantage because I am not trendy in the slightest. At least I don't think so. Maybe you guys think different. Let me know in the comments. Thumbs up if you believe so. Yeah, we're right. gonna get <laughs> thumbs down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If if you don't agree, please don't thumbs down. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> so I didn't like walk in being like, so I'm uh, innovator. I'm uh, prestige. I'm yes, so prestige. I'm so confused as to which one it is now. Anyway, I'm innovator prestige. I didn't go in like that, but in my preparation before the um, meeting, I was like, well, look. They know I'm an actor. They know I've got the talent. That's why I've been called into the room. So this is going to be about relationship. This is going to be about work ethic. This is going to be about how I work and mm -hmm. how I how I interact with the industry rather than necessarily whether or not I'm any good. Yeah. So I use the fascination advantage to kind of come up with kind of like my, not buzzwords, but kind of like my, my strategy for Your explaining how I work. How you do life. Yeah. And um, it's all based off of this science from the fascination advantage. So it's not like I'm going, right, what do, they, what do they want to hear? It was like, okay, what out of these characteristics are not good for me to bring up? And mm -hmm. what are the ones that actually are going to set me apart? Mm -hmm. And I think if you combine the Martini thing with the fascination advantage, what you end up getting is you get, this is your calling or a potential calling for you. And this is how you will work at it. And this is how you can combine the what with the how. That's a really good way of looking at it. And a nice brand package. That is a really good way of looking at it. I know. But another, <laughs> <laughs> which is why you should do both. But another reason why I think actually it's good to test out a few is because sometimes there's such a variety of tests out there. But the good thing that I like just taking, if they're free and they're available, I'll just mm -hmm. give them a go because I like to find out how many of them say the same things so you don't kind of, yeah. it means if something keeps cropping up again, like I think in another test, I'm like known as the star which is quite nice, and it means that you like you enjoy shining the light on other people, mm -hmm. but you don't tend to shine it on yourself. Oh, unfortunately. I know I'm shining light on you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but that goes back to that idea of being mystique. It's the same thing. It's just, it yeah. means that I hide my own skills and talents from people. Yeah. Because I don't. I like to make other people. I like to shine a light on other people. Mm -hmm. And so that was something like, oh, if that's saying it twice, then that must mean that's something I need to work on, You're which right. is exactly what I've done. So again, it's kind of. It's finding the correlation and where it's good to do the, the personality test. tests are saying the same thing. You yeah. go, oh, that's obviously definitely something that shines through in my personality. Definitely. But the 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 warning we've got put here definitely is the idea that you shouldn't kind of just get addicted to these personality tests because <laughs> a lot of the time people keep taking the test trying to figure it. It kind of goes back to that idea of if I keep taking them, I'll finally figure out what I should be doing. But I think what you've said there about the value, knowing the, the why and the how of what you do is the best, is, is a great starting point. Mm -hmm. It's not going to give you exactly what you should be doing, the clear path, but at least you know where your strengths lie. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the time it can be that people end up taking these tests and it's, it can become like a sort of procrastination. It can be a yeah, way of right. just, oh, well, I, I need to define what I do and then I'll think about what I should go into. So I don't want the people to think I'm going to do this test as a way to kind of just hold back from doing probably what actually matters uh -huh. in the end because they can become quite addictive and yeah. we're not trying to say oh keep taking tests they're really fun and stuff like that yeah i think i think 
a good way to a good way to do it really even if i am doing a shameless plug to our website but <laughs> we've got we've got a post with just six personality tests mm-hmm. on there that's all we've got on there there are there are so many personality tests out there but we've kind of narrowed it down to six that we like mm-hmm. um and i think if you just go on there and just limit yourself i mean pick and choose which ones you want to do by all means or if you do want to do all of them by all means do all of them but then just limit yourself to those because i think then if you start going I've done these personality tests and they're telling me all this amazing stuff about myself. Where can I find more? I mean, you're just going to end up looking, trying to find out you know, which Game of Thrones character you are. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's no good to anyone. <laughs> you're not going to walk into an interview or start branding yourself as the uh, the hound of, or the Daenerys Targaryen of digital content. Because yeah. everybody's going to go, what the f-? So just, fo- <laughs> just have some focus is basically what I'm saying. Yes. Um, and just limit yourself to those six, I think, is a good good way to to measure it. Definitely. And I think as well, like obviously, a lot of these are available for free online. So you might as well mm-hmm. take them. If they're there, they're yeah. going to take you 10, 15 minutes. If it exposes a little bit about yourself and suddenly you have a bit more self-awareness of, the, of who you are. And obviously, they can go a lot deeper. They've got coach and all that sort of stuff. That's up to you if you want to do that. But initially, if these tools are available freely online, I just think it's why not at the end of the day. Absolutely. Just just use those tools and, and, and use them as tools yeah um i think that's where you can find some real real value from them so i think that's a good place to wrap up and um, we're kind of coming to time anyway so i think that's a good place to wrap up any kind of final personality test just quick fire things that you just need to say that maybe we haven't covered the things i don't need to cover but i just really want to reiterate ultimately is that if you're going to do these just honestly be honest yes. with yourself just try to be as honest as possible i know it's easy to kind of move it up one slot or move it down like the way you have to do these sliders on them just be totally honest with yourself mm-hmm. and then number two i would just love to like kind of hear what came up for you like where do you fall did it actually meet what you expected yeah. did you think oh or did it highlight something that you totally weren't expecting and just tell us how you find personality tests, if it was useful for you. Yeah. That'd be quite yeah. good. Yeah, let us know in the comments. If you've gone on the blog posts, comment on the blog post. Let us know how it's gone. Let us know what you've learned and what, what you think you need to improve, all that sort of stuff. We'd love to know. Um, yeah. So thanks very much for listening and watching, guys. Um, once again, if you want to go check out that blog post, uh, if you go, we'll probably put a link in the video as well, just so mm-hmm. you can click on that if you're watching on YouTube. But if you go to powerfulanswers.com, click on the little magnifying glass in the top right hand corner, just type in "know thyself," uh, <laughs> it will come up. I think it's the only one that comes up. So just do that, click on that, and then you've got all the personality personality tests there that you can try. Um, yeah, and please check out the survey powerfulanswers.com forward slash you. We'd love to hear your opinions on what we're doing. And click subscribe in iTunes or on YouTube. I love you forever. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. We will catch you next time. See you later.